Hi everyone, thank you for joining us. Uh, welcome to this Pro Copywriters webinar. I'm delighted we've got uh, Richard Spencer from A Thousand Monkeys, uh, a fantastic writing agency which is just down the road from me uh, in Dorset. Um, and he's joining us to talk about writing headlines. Um, we'll have some chances to uh, take questions from you uh, either during the session or at the end. Um, so if there's anything you're kind of wondering about or maybe how to apply some of these ideas, uh, just type them into the questions panel uh, and we'll get to those later. Uh, so yeah, over to you, Richard. Thanks very much, Leif. Um, I believe this is a, a record-breaking uh, webinar in terms of registration, so not feeling any pressure, but uh, thanks for uh, everyone attending and hopefully you're going to find this a useful uh, run through an, an approach to writing headlines. Um, to give you some background, I um, started writing headlines back in the 80s when shoulder pants were big, hair was probably even bigger, uh, and the box I carried my ads around in was substantially uh, of a certain size too, because um, it was packed with ads. Uh, in, in those days, the opportunities to um, communicate were much more limited, so we were destined to be writing press ads and posters. And so life in an agency was very much dedicated to writing lines day in and day out, uh, creating hundreds of headlines for different brands. Uh, and my experience covered things like Virgin or Rolls Royce or Coleman's or Unilever, uh, some banks or uh, charities like the nurses. Um, but in that context or in that kind of guise as a writer, I certainly write a lot of headlines. Skipping forward to uh, today, uh, as Leif rather kindly said, I run a writing agency called A Thousand Monkeys. We're based in Bournemouth. We still work for a wide variety of clients, but increasingly, and I'm sure this is true of many of you out there, um, our work is largely digital. We're working for a lot of websites, um, inevitably emails, social. Uh, our writing covers uh, still covers print, but I'm always intrigued and I kind of wonder to myself, you know, as the, as the headline died to death, is it time to put the headline to bed? Uh, if programmatic advertising is the nature of the beast, if social is kind of taken over, if predictive texting and AI are going to take over all our kind of writing um, work, do we need to worry about headlines anymore? I think we do. Our clients certainly do. Um, we work for a wide variety of different businesses and one of the things we do as well as write for different clients is we run training sessions. So. We run a workshop called Sharper Copywriting, which over the years has proved extremely popular with a wide variety of different businesses. And in those businesses, one of the questions that people are always keen to ask is, how do we write headlines? So I know that within those marketing teams, and I'm sure it's true of agencies as well, there's still an interest in how do we create the best types of short form copy, that soundbite that captures the attention and gets people interested. Um, Obviously, posters and press still might be part of the marketing mix, but increasingly flyers, direct mail, email, social, uh, event-based stuff has become more important. Uh, and even packaging is, is much more of an opportunity now to create um, a little kind of touch point, a headline or a soundbite that might attract the attention of customers. I noticed even the other day that my toilet paper managed to um, include some sneaky little messages on the side of the pack. And I think we're increasingly aware that everything that we do is an opportunity to connect with customers and reach out. And the better that little short form piece of copy, that sound bite, that headline is, then the more likely you are to make a good connection. So how do people sit down and write headlines uh, in marketing teams is something that's intrigued me. Um, what I've found is that they struggle, uh, which is why the agencies developed this tool, the headline, the fantabulous thousand monkey uh, headline generating tool. I want to take a sort of hypothetical example just to explain how um, we do this. There's a lot of advice online, this sort of stuff. I'm sure you've kind of Googled yourselves, 21 headlines, 19 ways, 47 headline examples, 106 tested methods, 164 email subject lines, how to write a catchy headline in one minute and seven seconds. That's very precise, isn't it? Um, and yet, despite all this plethora of advice online, I think people still 
finding it slightly difficult to get to grips with how to write something. I think the advice generally in these sorts of sites is largely aimed at digital email based uh, techniques um, and they tend to be quite repetitive of themselves. Um, I'm going to take a hypothetical example here. This is what I experience through the clients that we work with in terms of think the way they approach headline writing at the moment. Let's take this um, hypothetical Airfresh 2000 air conditioning unit. It's been a hot weekend when I was putting this PowerPoint together, so I thought the cooling product would be quite an interesting thing to look at. If I was running a workshop with their marketing team and I talked to them about how they were going to create headlines for their next let's say direct mail piece, I suspect the conversation would go something along the lines of, well, we sit down at the computer uh, with our product brief to hand, and then we start writing headlines one at a time. And what I've seen happen and what marketing teams tend to do, um, and it'd be interesting to know whether your experiences follow this sort of pattern, that they write one line, here we go, the Airfresh 2000 is here. Then we, I mean, well, that's not quite doing the trick, is it? We'll improve that slightly, so we'll say, we'll say it's fantastic. That sounds a bit cheesy, so we need to work a bit harder. Um, it was really cool. That kind of has a play on the uh, function of the product. So that's, that's starting to get into the right zone. And as this line sort of emerges, it's not really changing as much as it should do, I think, in terms of creating a great headline. We eke it forward bit by bit. And another line, Airfresh 2000, no air con. There's something, something amusing in that. The idea that other products might be diddling you out of your money or... Here we go, the Airfresh 2000, breath of fresh air. That sounds quite good. It's all based around wordplay, generally. Uh, and then we'll go too far. Uh, the Airfresh 2000, air today and gone tomorrow. No, we think we've gone too far there. We'll probably end up around there. And what I found is that where people are writing lines like this on a screen, bit by bit, moving it forward, uh, they lack the sense of diversity or exploring new areas that really as a, as, a, as a headline writer you need to be thinking about. So this got us thinking about how can we help teams or copywriters think of different and more engaging ways to write headlines. So we start by thinking about the process. So here are a few tips that we think kind of will help you write better headlines. The first one is, is move away from the computer. Um, Lovely things, but they do lock you into certain ways of working uh, and hugely distract to quite good sources of information, good for research. But when it comes to writing headlines, our top tip would be to move away from the computer uh, and choose a new set of weapons. Here's uh, my ideal setup once I've moved my keyboard to one side. Uh, I've got a favoured type of pen, which is the Pentel Sign Pen, uh, which is a sort of nice flowing action to it. Uh, I've got an A3 pad of paper, which is uh, conveniently stored under the keyboard, uh, a trusty pencil, and obviously uh, a cup of tea uh, for endless refreshment. But once I've stopped looking at the screen and start focusing on the pad, I find this is a great way to improve the quality of the headline writing. Uh, embrace failure. I think this is one of the things where teams really struggle. So they start writing line and they want everyone to be good and they're not expecting any of them to be terrible, even though in retrospect, we can tell that lots of them are. When I worked in agencies in the past, you would expect to write two or 300 lines for every one that you thought was any good. And it meant that lots of them had to be absolutely excruciatingly terrible. Um, to write one great headline, you need to write hundreds of bad ones. And there's no bad idea to Acknowledge that at the start. Don't worry about writing something brilliant from the outset. I think that's a huge amount of pressure to put yourself under to make sure that, that first thing that you write down is going to be anywhere near the great soundbite or headline that you expect it to be. I would expect to write a lot of very bad ones to start with, partly because I need to explore the story uh, and find out what I'm really trying to say. I think it's important not only to get away from the computer, but sometimes to get out of the office environment um, and free your mind in different ways. I'm uh, quite a keen swimmer and staring at the bottom of a swimming pool um, is remarkably effective for me in terms of thinking of different headlines. There's some very good research to suggest that mundane, repetitive, methodical tasks are extremely good for creative thinking. There's an experiment where 
they gave three different groups a set of Lego bricks. One group was allowed to create uh, the most creative thing they could from the bricks. Another group was allowed to sort them into sort of random uh, collections of stuff. And one group was told to sort them by colour alone. And the group that did best uh, in the creative tasks following that exercise were the ones who were asked to sort them into uh, colour alone. Very repetitive, boring exercise, but it meant their mind was free to wander into different areas, which is an excellent uh, practice for creativity. And if any of you have got suggestions for uh, any ways that you kind of free your mind up for excellent headline writing or put yourself in the zone for doing this kind of activity, um, that might be interesting to let Leaf know. We might ask, uh, see what he finds out having asked that question. Avoid puns. I think this is a key bit of advice for me. Uh, I think inexperienced headline writers particularly leap to puns immediately. That doesn't mean they're a bad thing, uh, but I think avoiding them to start with uh, is a very good practice. You really need to kind of get to grips with what your product is about rather than the wordplay associated with what that might be. Uh, here's some examples of some excruciating puns that we found. Two ways to ruin your day for computer game, Lord of the Fries. I think food shops in particular have a great um, uh, tendency to go down the punning route. Uh, or uh, Lino Ritchie, our favourite uh, uh, flooring installer. Um, now they raise a smile, but I think in terms of perceptions of your brand or your business, they have a, a cheapening effect. So we would always suggest that you avoid puns uh, for as long as possible. Of course, if a brilliant piece of wordplay comes along, then it's to be embraced and celebrated. I always rather like this lorry for uh, Kellogg's All Brand. Uh, it's a perfect piece of wordplay, isn't it? It works on all levels, raises a smile, uh, unless you're absolutely stuck behind it on the M4, I'm guessing. Um, and we'll come back to this uh, headline structure a little bit later on because it illustrates one of the techniques that we think is quite successful. This is a good illustration of something that's um, a technique and as well as a, a lovely bit of wordplay. So just be careful with puns. And develop a method, which is really what today is about, um, is to find some approach to writing headlines which allows you to beat those deadlines. We know how much pressure you could be under in terms of creating a headline is always needed as soon as possible um, and so that induces stress which induces uh, a lack of creativity I would say it tends to reduce your ability to think straight or think creatively um, so we want to take the pressure out of the situation by developing a method that allows you to be confident that you've got an approach to tackling this problem which is going to generate a great line. Uh, if you've not seen this book, and you, certainly if you work in an agency, Hey Whip or Squeeze, this is, I would say, the seminal guide to uh, life in an agency and creating great advertising by Luke Sullivan, who's an American copywriter. And there's a rather nice line in it about his approach to writing uh, headlines um, in which he's broken the process down. So he, he says, is, don't write headlines willy nilly. First do willy, then do nilly. Um, and I really like the kind of sense that Approaching it one bit at a time, uh, breaking the problem into different areas is something that allows you to, I think, probably tackle most problems a little bit more effectively. And it certainly works for headline writing as well. So what's our approach? How do we develop that? Well, we, I'm just going to take that one step further. This is our, a picture of our Fantabulous Thousand Monkey headline generator, which we'll um, explore in a bit more detail as the webinar goes on. Um, and essentially, it's based around the theory that impact or the attention grabbing nature of your headline depends on a technique. So that's the style of the headline of which uh, we will run through a few uh, and times the insight that you have. So what what you're going to say and how you're going to say it, the two things in combination are extremely important. I think there is a tendency, particularly if you've Googled those 106 ways to write a great headline, that they are purely about technique or a style and aren't forcing you to think too much about the insight or the strategic thinking that's got to go into the ad um, that's going to help you connect with your customers. 
that's what it looks like inside, unfolded and falls into a lovely A2 piece uh, with a variety of different headline writing techniques and explanations as to their persuasive power. And then on the other side, there's a, a grid, which can look a bit scary uh, as a blank piece of paper, but the technique is going to help you fill that in. And you can see that one is uh, six by six. So you can see that if you were to fill all those boxes in, you would at the end of the process have 36 headlines. It's as simple as that. Um, so I'm going to run you through the approach and we'll come back to how to use the headline generator towards the end of the webinar and even how to make your own, a bit like Blue Peter. Um, so that's all that's unfolding. Yeah, it's a bit more glamorous, isn't it? There we go. So the, I think where the insights is the key thing um, to think about, I think people leap to headline writing without going back to the brief or thinking what the strategic implications are of the communication they're going to make. Um, back in the 80s and 90s, USPs were the big thing, the unique selling proposition. Uh, I think it's still a popular way to think about uh, the communication. Is your product better or faster or quicker or cheaper? What does it offer that your rivals don't offer? What's the thing that sets your product or service apart? That's going to be one of the insights that we might think, okay, we could explore that. We're going to explore the fact that uh, our Airfresh 2000 is the coolest uh, air around. How is it used? Always look at the usage of the product or the service that you're uh, exploring. Um, where, where is the, is this a temporary thing for the air cooler? Is it something that you're going to buy? Is it something that's just for the summer months, or does it have a range of different options? What kind of people are we targeting? I think the demographic uh, is going to have a huge influence. Might be dictated slightly by your media choice, but thinking about the people. Is there an offer? Sometimes the more functional bits of information are a good lead story. Perhaps it's 20% off or uh, there's a two for one uh, in the summer months. What are the benefits? Is going to be a crucial area to explore and we'll go into that in a bit more depth in a minute, but what are the benefits of your product? So none of these are headline writing techniques explicitly, I would say. Um, they are strategic thoughts that you might want to think about as areas to explore. What's the provenance? Where is it from? If it's a food product, Perhaps where is it grown? Who's it made by? These are all important things to think about before you even put pen to paper. How is it made? The manufacturing techniques. There may be some little detailed story in there that we could explore. If you're working in an agency, then you'd be lucky enough um, to be working with a, a planning department who may have come up with an excellent strategy for you. If you're uh, working as a freelance copywriter, this is the sort of thing that you probably have to do a lot of work yourself. We certainly make sure that we never write without having written a brief first for our clients and bouncing that back to them and checking that we're working on the right lines or exploring the right kind of areas. 10 techniques uh, I'm going to explore now um, and show you how we would think about these. Uh, other techniques are available. Um, at the end of this section, perhaps we could have a little poll of the kind of techniques that you find useful um, and again, perhaps you could send those into LEAF and we'll review any ideas we've got as the progress develops in terms of developing techniques. The point here is it doesn't really matter what the techniques are, but you need to have a list or a library of different techniques up your sleeve, probably a repertoire of ideas that you could turn to quite quickly um, and know that they're effective, persuasive devices or structures. Um, nothing worse than staring at a blank piece of paper. But if you've given yourself uh, a constraint of a technique, then that's really going to help your headline writing develop. For me, this is the most important one, and it's the step that people miss out the most, uh, particularly when they leap to wordplay. Uh, find the story. What's this product or service really about? So let's get under the skin of it and find the story. There may be different ways of doing that. Um, it could be finding an emotional truth, but there is no particularly fancy piece of writing associated with this technique. It's based on your ability to identify the strongest story for your product or service. And it's about quick communication. I think newspapers and journalists do this very well. Sub-editors, I think, if you look at your newspaper headlines, uh, here's the page from uh, BBC on Monday. 
looking at these headlines, they're immediately clear what the story is about. They're economical, they're communicative, uh, they all revolve around uh, a, a verb as the centre of the action. So if you want to stylistically analyse why or how they work, so Corey Goff beats Venus Williams, the flight stir body was found in the garden and um, they are based around a verb. Um, and I would call this a storytelling headline. Um, and funnily enough, we run business writing workshops and this is equally useful technique for writing a PowerPoint or a presentation as it is a headline. When we take it a little bit further and give it a little creative twist, I think you can see how the honesty or the, just the straightforward storytelling uh, is very effective for certain kinds of uh, businesses. So this one for uh, Hypo Swiss Private Bank, we like our clients because of their money, they like us because of their honesty. It's pretty straightforward, but I think refreshingly uh, clear and honest about the bank in question. Um, or this one for uh, Volkswagen. This car will help you up the corporate ladder, just drive it to work early and work really hard. In the sense that there's no frills, just the story, just the kind of key insight as to how this product might work or may not work in this case. Um, the truth of the matter is always a good starting won't make your internet, staring won't make your internet faster. It's just identifying a truth that we're all kind of familiar with. Nothing again, nothing particularly fancy in the writing here. And I think this is a kind of key point to make is that where people are asked to write a headline, they feel a desire or a need or that the imperative is that they should be clever with their writing, but actually being clever around the insight is probably stronger. What goes in the ocean goes in you for a rise against plastics. Again, it's just a simple observation about the truth of the matter. And it's a much more effective headline than any kind of pun around plastics bobbing in the ocean. If you're interested in this aspect or if you've got a strategic mind on it, this is a very good book, um, The Battle for Your Mind, Positioning the Battle for Your Mind uh, by Al Reese and Jack Trout. It's been around for uh, decades. How many people? Half a million copies in print. There we go. Um, very short, quick read uh, and gets you thinking about, okay, how, what's the main positioning of our product or service. Um, I think there are kind of later iterations which obviously take into account how the world has changed since it was originally written, but that's a good one for your shelves. So once you've identified a story or we've got some insights and we'll come back when we look at the headline generator to show how uh, even at that point it's still worth exploring more than one option for your insight. Uh, but we need to combine that with some more techniques. So here are a few more to think about. So traditional ad techniques are something that I was schooled in. And I think if you're a copywriter, you probably may not be unfamiliar with some of these, but perhaps we can add a little bit more to the way you think about them. Um, remember, people are selfish as we all are. Uh, I think it's Dale Carnegie's saying. So this hasn't changed since the uh, 20s. There's a nice piece of research from uh, Jacob Nielsen Business, the, uh, the kind of grand daddies of uh, user experience in the state, states who identify your behavior online as selfish, ruthless, and lazy. Um, that's your behavior in a digital environment, which I think pretty much tallies with my Christmas shopping habit. Um, but selfishness is key and we need to appeal to that. So highlight the benefit. What's in it for me would be the kind of another way of expressing that. Um, here's an illustration of it where the benefit has been highlighted for Holiday Inn Express. Breakfast is included. Um, we need a new trainee. The old one became CEO. So what's in it for you as a trainee is that leap to stellar ranks within just applying. So you've, what I like about this little, this is just a little button for uh, uh, obviously a, a trainee job. But someone had gone to the effort of making that persuasive and used a, a really nice little headline technique of highlighting the benefit um, to make that as compelling as possible. I think being lateral is quite a useful kind of skill to bring into um, play here. So the more you weigh, the harder you are to kidnap, stay safe, eat cake. Uh, we use share this in workshops quite a lot as a way of just explaining to people that in terms of developing benefits, you need to think laterally. 
Um, the chances are your competitors have all thoughts of the same sorts of benefits as you, um, and you need to set yourself apart. So we run a little exercise with a pencil, and we ask someone to identify a feature of that pencil. Um, so they might typically pick uh, the rubber on the end. So the rubber is a feature, that's what it is, but what are the benefits of having a rubber? And how can we explore that story? And how might that help you with headline writing? The benefit of having a rubber is you eliminate mistakes. So we ask people, okay, so what's the benefit of eliminating mistakes? Uh, you get it right first time, they'll say. Fine, okay, what's the benefit of getting it right first time? Uh, it makes you look better. Great, what's the benefit of that? You get noticed, what's the benefit of being noticed? Uh, you get promoted, what's the benefit of being promoted? Uh, you earn more money, what's the benefit of earning more money? You retire earlier, what's the benefit of retiring earlier? You die happy, hopefully. Uh, and that all because you had a rubber on your pencil. So the learning here really is to say, well look, we have this idea that we, we need to think about the benefits, but typically people will stop thinking of benefits once they thought of one or two, but actually you need to explore that benefit story and take it as far as you can. Uh, typically the exercise ends in a bit of mild hysteria, uh, which is an important part of creativity. But our, our point being here that your, your rivals, your competitors will have thought of the same obvious benefits that you have for the product or service. So you need to take it as far as ludicrous, um, which is where the mild hysteria comes in. So you really need to go as far as daft. Our point being that somewhere between obvious and ludicrous is usually something quite interesting that your competitors uh, may not have thought of. And that's where we really want to get you. Along this journey of developing benefits, what you'll find is that the more fanciful and, uh, when I say ludicrous, the benefits will become, they actually become quite good stimulus for uh, the visual aspect of uh, your ad or poster, if that's the kind of medium you're working in. Um, so headlines are very much what we're concentrating on, but a headline needs a supporting picture in many instances. Um, and developing the benefit story, uh, in this case, saving paper, um, will often help you result in something that's visually interesting, um, which um, in this case is going to be saving the whale. So think about developing that benefit story until you've got something that might lead to a visual idea as well. Third technique, ask a question. Um, questions are always good. You can turn statements into question. Uh, I think there are different ways of thinking about questions. Curiosity would be a, a key one. How does the man who drives a snowplow drive to the snowplow? was one of Volkswagen's early, very famous ads, which went alongside uh, a TV ad. So that sense that, oh, I don't know if we answer that question. Uh, in this case, obviously the picture does the heavy lifting of terms of the answer, but it could equally be that you would read on and find out how that story developed. Uh, provocative, I think, is always a good area to get into with questions. What exactly is the benefit of the doubt, said The Economist, as part of their legendary headline driven campaign and empathy uh, you're never going to be able to retire so why should your boots from timberland so that sense that a question is a good way to get under our readers skin and again you could break down asking a question into these different areas i think we've got one more here oh intrigue are you dead did you die in a house fire uh well that's uh, if you follow this through you'll find out this is an advert for a smoke alarm so uh, at the bottom not only did you not smell like chicken or uh, you don't know elvis but do you regret not spending five pounds on a smoke alarm to which the answer might hopefully be yes but these techniques all kind of again i've grouped them under one ask a question but questions themselves divide into different categories and there's one more kind of question which we'll come across in a minute which i think is particularly effective Surprise is uh, a useful technique to master. Um, I think this is this is well, it, it, based in. I'm not going to go into too much detail here around the emotional uh, psychology of this, but surprise is part of that flight or fight response that we have uh, innately built into our 
brains. Uh, so if we saw a, a snake, we'd run. And I think surprise is a technique that works well in terms of headline writing. So giving people a bit of a shock or uh, presenting information in a new, different or uh, a way they haven't seen before is a technique that is always destined to engage readers, certainly at that superficial level. Uh, I like this uh, TripAdvisor uh, sign for a restaurant. Come in and try the worst salad one woman on TripAdvisor ever had in her life. Um, fairly surprising way of pitching your business, but I'm pretty intrigued to find out more. Picture a beach where the shells fall from the sky. So often it can be just a matter of reversing the expected and making it unexpected. So this is a really lovely ad for um, D-Day exhibition at Portsmouth uh, Harbour. Uh, and come back to TripAdvisor, even a one star review could be a positive for your business. Uh, in this case, it's a, a bit of a surprise that a business would want to publish a one star review, but in combination with the idea that this is for more advanced skiers or snowboarders, then suddenly works like a charm. And I think that kind of takes us into that very contrary. So, this is quite a good technique to have up your sleeve because. You just have to think of the opposite thing. Your product is brilliant. What is the worst thing you could possibly say about it? And how will that kind of help you sell your product or service? Again, going back to The Economist's legendary campaign, I never read The Economist would be probably one of the more contrary headlines that I've seen. Um, and then obviously the answer is the management trainee, age 42, has struggled to climb the greasy slopes of the management ladder so you're not having read The Economist. Krispy Kreme, you wouldn't expect them to say donuts are bad for you, but got your attention, didn't it? And makes a nice little story about all the other things that are bad for you and that life is a question of everything in proportion um, and that they're quite happy to celebrate the fact that donuts are bad for you. You just shouldn't do it that often. A restaurant in America. How good is our steak? Last week, a man who was choking on a piece refused the Heimlich manoeuvre which is a nice way to think about the quality of a product. So this is a good technique to master. All you need to do is think, okay, well, this is the good thing you want to say about our product. What would be the worst thing we could say? And how can we then turn that on its head to make an effective headline? Another area to it, there are much more uh, areas of uh, traditional ad techniques that you could explore. Uh, um, they tend to be rooted in emotion. So things like anger, fear, those sorts of areas. Um, behavioral psychology has became more of a popular discipline um, in the contemporary world of marketing and communications. Uh, there was a, a webinar on the Pro Copywriters site by Tim Fidgen uh, recently exploring uh, this in some detail. So I'm not going to go through this in, in that level of detail. I'd refer you to his uh, webinar around the different sorts of things you might think about. And I think we also had access to Richard Shotton's webinar, who's also very good in this area. One of the key books that they kind of base their advice on is uh, Roberto Cialdini's Six Pillars of Influence, which again, I think a nice little way of thinking, okay, I can think here are six more ideas that I could draw on. I find them easy to remember by using the acronym RASCAL. Uh, R would stand for reciprocation. Um, that's where you give something away for free in return for something, authority. So that might be, celebrity endorsement or an expert opinion, social proof, which is something we'll look at in a second, commitment, um, I think is particularly interesting, uh, availability, which is where products might run out, so that fear factor, and the one that we always forget, being likeable, I think that's something to come back to. So I would refer you to those other webinars in this area for the advice here, but here's a couple of ways that you might use it for copywriting or writing headlines. So social proof, uh, or we would call it find a crowd. Um, it's about identifying a group of people who will help persuade your own group. Um, in this case, from Shutterstock, the most popular image is downloaded by creatives like you. So by identifying that my fellows are doing this, then that's a good steer to me to do the same. Less of a headline, but I think the persuasive quality is there. Costa used this very successfully uh, for this campaign, which got Starbucks uh, so riled that they kind of tried to take them caught and lost. Uh, but the proof that more coffee lovers prefer Costa than other brands 
um, puts the evidence to that crowd technique. I like this one because it's in Gold's Flattery as well, so clever books for clever people from Waterstones. Uh, uh, a little bit Marmite this, but um, if we identify with the smug, clever people buying books on behavioural psychology, then this will work a treat. There's another technique here, which is our authority here. Booksellers chosen by books chosen by booksellers of this store is a nice steer in the direction of someone who's an expert, even though they're probably a graduate on summer vacation. Commitment is a um, behavioural psychology trait that I mentioned, I think is a very effective headline writing technique. The idea of commitment is that once you've bought into one aspect or one part of a conversation, then the chances are you're likely to buy into the next bit. So as a question, this would work very well. Hi Sarah, do you want to keep on saving money? Said Money Supermarket in their great GDPR follow-up email campaign. The, quest the answer to that question I'm pretty sure it's going to be yes. So if you can write a question where the answer is yes, that's a huge incentive to readers to keep on reading the copy. If you can get them to say yes to your question, that's going to work very well. Loving this now? Yep. Yeah. Oh, try sleeping on it. Crisis, uh, making the most of that technique there. Uh, and there is a book that has 50 more ideas around how to uh, use these behavioural techniques. I think this is, I think I've stolen quite a few from this one, uh, but I would look at that for your shelves. And then, of course, the classic techniques are not to be ignored. Uh, was inspired by speech writers. Um, is Martin Luther King, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. So it's not a headline but it's a very motivating and inspiring piece of speech and you can see that the rhythms there um, are very compelling and we can look at those and take them on into our kind of library of headline writing techniques so we've picked out three there are many more but here's three for starters puzzle solution contrasts three-part lists would all be good examples um, I think puzzle solution we've touched on already um, that's our Kellogg's lorry um, so it's a well-known rhetorical device, but that's a headline technique as well. Pose a problem and your product is a solution. Uh, contrast, I think you'll see a lot. I think Apple use this a lot, this idea of weighing one thing up against another thing. Light and heavyweight being their kind of take on the hardware and the technology within it. Um, or this one for Vodafone, big movies, mobile size. So just again, weighing one thing up against another makes a very effective rhythm and uh, as a kind of proven persuasive structure. Uh, and then an old favourite, three-part list. This might be something you kind of do intuitively, but it's worth kind of having down for the record. Swimmers are smarter, stronger and prunier, um, said uh, Swim Today Org. Uh, and I think the point here is that the third bit works best when it's either funny or unexpected. So if you're doing a three-part list, just watch out for that last one and see if you can make it work as well as possible. Uh, in Dulux, I saw, I conquered, I came. There you go. If you enjoy this kind of rhythmic style of writing and you uh, have an urgent need to create, in this case, I'll call it a strap line, but it could equally be a headline. This is a little game that we play in our workshops. Um, I borrowed from a friend of mine uh, called Ros Sinclair, who was a great proper writer. Um, and the idea here is that you give yourself some constraints. So the way that this work in a workshop is that we would get a group of people. So uh, if you're working in an office or you're working in a team, this is, a, this is a great way to generate a lot of ideas very quickly. Uh, we've used it with publishing companies like Pan Macmillan and uh, Headline Publishing very successfully for them to generate poster ideas. So you give yourself, again, a list of techniques. Here we are. Assonance, alliteration, contrast, rule of three, repetition, onomatopoeia, kiss, neologism. And here are the kind of strap lines that have used those famously in the past. Uh, you only get a new with Taifu, the totally tropical taste of lilt. Treats melt in the mouth, not in the hand. Mars Day helps work, rest and play. Have a break, have a Kit Kat. Snap, crack and pop. Ron Sill does what it says on the tin. And you know when you've been tangoed. And the trick here is that you write one technique on a sheet of paper. 
uh, for each of these. So each, each technique has a separate sheet. Then uh, under the guise of someone with a stopwatch, you get 10 people in a room. You give them 10 strap line techniques, one each. And after a minute, they have to pass their sheet to the next person. One minute per technique. And in 10 minutes, you will have 100 strap lines. 97.36% of which will be absolutely terrible. But how many strap lines or headlines do you need? One absolute cracker is all you need. Um, so if you've tuned into this webinar and you're working in a business, do this one once time. If you're stuck, you've got a deadline, you could use the techniques I've just outlined or any others, but the point is to put some constraints around it. What you'll find is that there'll be an enormous amount of stress, a blind panic, and then people will let go uh, and mild hysteria will be the order of the day. Um, and when people let go, they write better. So these are some of the things we've looked at in our list of techniques. Obviously far more uh, techniques that are available. Uh, other great copywriters have got other ways of writing ads. These are by no means definitive. Your challenge is to make your own little library of ideas and then apply them using the Fantabulous Thousand Monkey Headline Generator. Uh, and because you haven't got one yet, you will have to embrace the principle and I will show you how to do it in your own Blue Peter style version. So as I explained earlier, the headline generator is our uh, product of uh, many workshops, um, finding people needed some assistance and a reminder of some of the things we talk about during the course of the workshop. Um, so it unfolds into a rather lovely uh, A2 poster full of different headline ideas and reasons why they're successful or useful. Um, so it could be the Costa idea or the idea, they're all in there, little ideas, little tips as a reminder. So you have to compile your own library here. On the other side is a grid, which is where we combine our insight and technique together. I thought we should use a simple product. So I've looked at Mr. Porky's pork scratchings or something, a bit of fun that might illustrate how this works. If you haven't got our beautifully finished headline generator, then uh, you will need to create your own. Uh, this is the do-it-yourself version, get a pad. Uh, as an A3 pad or A2, uh, possibly better, but draw a grid. The grid is the important thing. Uh, and what you do is along the top, you write a list of six or I think it's five, five techniques in that one. And down the side, you write a list of five different insights. So across the top for uh, pork scratchings, we might have highlight benefit, a three part list, surprise, we could kind of, it doesn't really matter. It, uh, the more random, the better. And then down the side, we might write some ideas about what are our insights for this particular product? How would we like to sell it? So is it the fact that it's um, something that you could share? Is it the provenance of the product? That the fact that the pigs are from Gloucester? Uh, is it the fact that it's uh, best enjoyed with a pint? This is the strategic thinking that you should have done before sitting down to write the headline, but hopefully you've got some great ideas here already. So eventually you'll end up with a grid that looks something like that. So with a, a list of different techniques across the top and a list of different insights down the side. Now my preferred approach to starting this is to get one, well, I usually do this in teams at workshops, is to get one of the, one of the pair to shut their eyes and stick their finger somewhere random so there we go over there so we've got commitment with a point and then i say okay so what would, how would you write a headline based on those two factors so great with the point times commitment and what you'll find is you'll write a line like fancy a little dibble with that point to which the answer would hopefully be yes so that's ticked our commitment box and so you go on so you just randomly fill the squares um, wherever your finger sees fit to land next. Sharing alliteration could be for friends, family, and fellow scratching scrunchers. Uh, we could have quality ingredients and find the story, which might be very straightforward, really. Find the pigs make finer scratchings might be all that we need there. Uh, alternative to crisps and a contrast, for instance, might result in why crisp when you can crunch. 
or great with the pint and contrary might be the worst pint in the world is one without Mr. Porky's and so on and so on. So very quickly you'll find you'll fill that sheet with different ideas. Some will be absolutely awful but within them there might be one that you think hang on there's a gem of an idea here. Um, it may be something you need to take away and develop it but either way using that grid you'll have 36 different approaches to tackling the problem which I assure you will be far more varied than staring at a screen writing one line at a time and the vital thing to remember is that you only need one really good idea and to achieve that you only need one headline generator which brings me to the end of my talk but i um, very happy to answer any questions I think I might have posed a few on the way through uh, and have moved on swiftly but if anyone's got in touch with Leaf that would be great but how can we help? Wonder <coughs> wonderful thank you Richard um, yeah well that was so interesting uh, yeah I mean I'm just thinking to me that seems like it could be useful for so much more than uh, just writing headlines, although it's not just writing headlines because that's a hugely important part of the work that we do. But uh, I was just thinking that creating a grid like that gives you more than just a headline. It potentially gives you a kind of a concept for uh, a campaign or a you know piece of collateral or a, an email or you know much more than just the headline itself. So I think actually if you were struggling to you know come up with ideas for um, campaigns or communications I think this could really help with that because often you know the headline is the start and that really kind of directs what follows. No very much so and I think the, the key here really is it's about thinking in more different directions I think uh, you, I've see, just seen people get locked into uh, one one direction on a screen and so embracing that diversity is the key thing so whether it is a campaign or a single headline like you say I think is and pass with the same approach to thinking more widely around the issue and, and putting yourself in a different by, by, by creating the constraints of an insight and a technique it'll make you think of things that you wouldn't normally have considered and, and the most freak the most common comment we get from workshops when people are using that tool is I would never have thought of that but that's really good and I think that's a really interesting insight yeah it's interesting actually I, and as you say i mean i think that's what i normally do I, once i have a an idea for a headline uh, i might come up with other variations but it's just a variation on that theme i'm not really um kind of using a different technique or a different concept or an underlying insight um so yeah i, I think that's really helpful um uh, let's see the only the only question we've had Actually, we had a couple of suggestions uh, from uh, people uh, in terms of how do you kind of clear your mind uh, so that you can uh, sort of do some some of that background thinking or, or kind of strike upon an idea without uh, without searching for it. Um, Susan McGurk suggested that colouring in uh, is is useful yeah, for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah and that's a, a kind of good yeah mindless or, or mindful activity uh, oh. and uh, we had another suggestion running or walking the dog yeah, is very useful yeah. for that um, kind of bare your head repetitive yeah free your brain yeah I think it's good like if you can't really do much else like running or walking there's not a lot else you can be doing your <laughs> your brain is kind of free just to to mull things over um, Let's see, Catherine Strachan has asked if you have any advice for writing uh, digital headlines. Um, so I don't know if, I mean, yeah, I don't know if you have any specific advice for. Um, I think it's not hugely dissimilar. Um, I've, I've obviously showed lots of press and posters because they make better visuals, but actually the techniques are largely the same. I think if you um, look at some of the, the Google, some of those. Um, um, areas that we, we looked at very early in the webinar about you know 106 different ways to write a headline they might be more digitally focused um, and so they'll often uh, feature things like you know feature a number or um, they'll have different ideas around what has proven works well in um, a digital space 
but essentially the approach is the same that you need you need diversity i mean it depends on the size of the brand and your kind of audience and who how you're capable of measuring these things but um, you need to create a variety of different approaches even if it's just to do um, split testing for emails um, and so the, so, so the technique is is largely the same i think it just just that you might apply some slightly different techniques which you borrow from a more proven digital space yeah and, and i suppose you might you know once you've come up with some great ideas you might have to um make sure it's going to satisfy any uh, seo people uh, or other kind of <laughs> stakeholders who might have a say in in the content um mm. uh let's see uh so leah gantz has asked if there's an online version of your uh lovely headline generator available if you get in touch with us at the contact addresses uh, on the screen we can uh, email you a pdf Excellent. Okay. Well, hopefully you'll get lots of <laughs> get lots of emails um, about that. Let's see. Uh, Jane Shepley uh, says, uh, moving on from an idea, she often has to remind herself to murder your darlings. Um, uh, yeah. So, which can be hard to do when you're working alone. Um, but yes, it can be helpful just to maybe give up on things that you thought were brilliant and kind of work past it. Yeah, you have to be ruthless, and I, and I think you know the, the the better you get at creating a volume of ideas. I think if you've only got if you've only got a handful, it can be very difficult to to institute a cull. I think if you've got a lot, it suddenly gets a lot easier to be ruthless and get rid of lots in one go. And suddenly you kind of find you you develop the ability to um, see the wood for the trees kind of thing and get rid of the stuff that's not as good as the one that you're searching for. You'll never, you'll never, you'll never completely know. I think this is the problem for writers: is you'll never be absolutely sure you've got the right line. Very frequently, it might be the first one you wrote down. I mean, that's the sod's law. <laughs> you know, you write one down, and you think, well, I'm not sure about that, and then a week later, you think, you know, what well, that that first one was bloody brilliant. Um, I think that's just that's life, unfortunately. Yeah, excellent. Okay, uh, Eleanor O'Kane. Uh, suggest using word clouds as just as a way of kind of brainstorming ideas, uh, getting away from the obvious. That's, uh, it. I mean, that, that, that's the best of phrase, though, isn't it? Getting away from the obvious. I mean, I think that's the important thing is how do you remove yourself from stuff that everybody's already done or you getting locked into the wrong kind of patterns? Yeah, and again, like as you were saying, Richard, you know, having a, a big pad so you can write these things down. I think sometimes it feels more free because you don't have to, it doesn't have to be linear. Like uh, if you've got a Word document, there's everything's, you know, follows an order and a pattern. Uh, whereas if you can just scribble things down on, on a notepad, you can, you know, put things in different directions, in different places and, and just kind of, I don't know, I, I, I quite like doing that sometimes. Um, let's see, uh, Sebastian Lander uh, asks, let's see, uh, you specified specified that once you've got the 36 headlines, uh, you then only need one. Uh, but Sebastian's saying he struggles with knowing when enough is enough. Uh, he always feels there might be that one stellar headline out there that he hasn't found yet. Uh, so how can Sebastian uh, accept imperfection? Uh, well, uh, I think deadline deadlines usually the kind of crucial factor, isn't it? I think the, you know you'll never you'll never it'll never be perfect. I mean, it's very hard to know. Uh, I certainly, you know, work with lots of uh, TV ad directors who spend, who spend, who spend, you know, years, years re-editing TV ads that have been and gone, uh, for example. Uh, fiddling with kind of uh, headlines can is an obsessive compulsive disorder. But the great thing is that you need someone else to, it, it, someone else will tell you, it, someone else's opinion is probably the best. Uh, there'll be the people who say you've either got it or you haven't. Um, I think it's very hard to know. And, and yeah. the most, uh, and the, be the most, the best creative people I've worked with, and, and I've worked with some of the great names in the past, you know, and they were, they, they were two, they had two qualities. Uh, one, they were, they were, they were very childlike, uh, in, in very, um, and th that ability that children have to think very randomly, randomly and wide. I can hear a few out there thinking wild, widely and randomly. Is something that all the creative people have that ability. And then secondly, quite egotistical, actually. They tend to, they tend to, you know, tend to value their opinion above other, other people's. Um, and often, often that's a key factor too. 
Um, yeah, okay. You'll never really know. Fantastic. Uh, and let's see. Um, yeah, oh, can we uh, can we share your slides with everyone? Because there are quite a few references and uh, you had like lists of these techniques which might be useful to refer back to. Yeah, I think, um, so have you recorded it? I was, uh, have you recorded it anyway? Is there a kind of the, yes. the that's, so there's a recording yeah. and I can work out some way of putting it on slide share or something? Okay, or you can, yeah, if you uh, send it to me, I can send it out with uh, any, a follow-up email to everyone that's attended. Um, and finally, uh, Eva or Ewa uh, Erdman is asking uh, about the workshops that you run. Um, so, yeah, what kind of workshops uh, do you do? So we run different, well, a variety of different workshops. The one that we've kind of um, would feature this in would be something we call sharper copywriting, which we can uh, tend to... Um, talk to a business, analyze their kind of problems or where their kind of challenges lie, and then structure the workshop around their specific needs, uh, of which online writing might be one of them. Um, so it tends to be around persuasive writing, but we offer other workshops in customer service or business writing. Um, we've done some grammar workshops lately with Lush, which has been quite good fun. Um, so a whole range of different things, but this is largely from our sharper copywriting workshop. Great. Uh, well, thank you again, Richard. I think that's been uh, really helpful. And <laughs> I see. Uh, yeah, a Andrew uh, is asking if there's a conference where he could mo hear more uh, stuff like this and get some more good advice. And uh, which brings me neatly on to the fact that uh, we have a, a copywriting conference uh, coming up in October. Um, so if you'd like to uh, learn more about uh, you know, how to write effective copy and to get some new ideas and inspiration, uh, check out copywritingconference.com. Um, yeah, and do get in touch with Richard if you want to know more about their workshops uh, or to request a copy of the headline generator. Um, but otherwise, yeah, thank you all very much. And thank you, Richard, uh, for presenting all this information to us. I know I found it really useful. Um, I'm definitely going to use this technique soon. Um, hopefully, Richard, you'll come back again and, and run another session for us. Cheers, Leif. Lovely. Thanks very much. Brilliant. Thank you all. Goodbye.